Book of Lamentations. Lamentations is a book of sorrow. The book of death. Funeral. It's a Hebrew book. And there's really no question the author of being Jeremiah because the Hebrew style and the style of Hebrew matches Jeremiah. It is definitely after the captivity, after the destruction of Jerusalem. There's a place I'm looking here. And they say a cruise sticks, which I don't understand. But they say the first four chapters are several alphabets of the letters beginning with the several verses. It says acoustic kind of style. Each verse beginning with a new letter. Only Lamentation 3, every three verses begin with a new letter. And when we pick up Lamentation chapter 1, it's going to start off, Jeremiah is going to give us, real quick, a summary of what's happened. And then what Jeremiah is going to do is he's going to speak for the city. As Solomon will sometimes speak of wisdom personified. And that's what Jeremiah is going to do with Jerusalem. He's going to personify Jerusalem as it's a woman speaking. How does the city sit solitary? This is after the destruction that was full of people. How has she become a widow? Death. That's how you become a widow. You are the survivor of a dead. Jerusalem survived, but there's death and destruction. She that was great among the nations, and she was, and princes among the provinces, how has she become a tributary? Tributary is when you pay tax. You give your money to another authority. We were a nation before we were a nation, and we were paying taxes to England. And then we had the big tea party, and no taxation without representation, and now we're paying a trillion amount of taxes to our government. She weepeth soar in the night. It's all figurative. I mean, a city doesn't cry. Her tears are on her cheeks. Now, a city don't have cheeks. I mean, there are places in the Bible you cannot take literal. We'll be reading, I just read last night in one of the minor prophets, come to Bethel and transgress. Uh, you know, a preacher told me one time, sarcastic is a sin. God was being sarcastic. Among all her lovers, she has none to comfort her. Well, then I guess they weren't lovers. And there are people today, oh, I'm loved, oh, I, I. and then trials and tribulations and troubles in your life, you realize, where are they? And I've had many Christians from many churches. Where are they? I've still got Christians today. They'll contact me and say, hey, listen, you know, we're praying for you. I had a Christian the other day. I saw he's still out there witnessing, still out there doing something. I just drop, hey, listen, I want to tell you, brother, I pray for you as much as I think of you. But where are her lovers? You may think, oh, I got a good Christian, I got a good Christian relationship. Oh, you know, I got it. Yeah, wait till after your troubles and problems and situations. You'll find out that that love wasn't love, it was lust. Many marriages are found out it's lust and not love. All her friends had dwelt treacherously with her. I guess they weren't your friends. I have had friends in the Baptist churches, and now they treat me treacherously. Well, you weren't my friend. They are become her enemies. 
Well, wait a minute, I thought they were lovers. I thought they were friends. And now you, they're the enemies? They weren't your lovers. They weren't your friends. And you better be careful. Judah is gone to the captivity. Yes. So see, Judah's already in captivity by Jeremiah because of her affliction, because of her great servitude. She dwells among the heathen. She's in Babylon. Daniel's there. Ezekiel's there. She findeth no rest. All her persecutors overtook her between her straits. The ways of Zion do mourn. Zion is Jerusalem. Because none come to the solemn feast. Passover. They don't come for the Passover. There are three times a year that the Jewish males were to come. They're not coming. All her gates are desolate. The, the gates are the city hall. The gates where all the business would happen. When Boaz had a legal matter, he went to the gates and he saw that, I, I don't know if he gave the man the, who had the legal rights to Ruth in her husband's land. Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. In Nehemiah, we're going to learn that they were doing business at the gates. And Nehemiah said, that's not on the Sabbath. You know. Her priest sighed. <sighs> Where's the people? Where's the sacrifices? Where's the praise of God? Where's the tithe? Her virgins are afflicted. And she's in bitterness. That's a, that's a wicked sin. That's a sin that, that draws root. That's hard to get rid of bitterness. I had one person one time, I, I actually had bitterness. And I just finally got to the point, you know what? I'm losing sleep. I'm losing happiness. And that guy probably doesn't even know. And I prayed to God and I prayed about that person and got rid of that bitterness. The way to get rid of bitterness is pray for the person you're bitter against. Her adversaries are the chief. Her enemies prosper. Psalms writes things about fret not, envy not the wicked. For the Lord has afflicted her. For the multitude of her transgression. Judah has fallen because of her sins. Her children are going into captivity before the enemy. So Lamentations is written after Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is telling us this is why sin. This is where captivity. The who is the enemy we know from Jeremiah. If you don't read Jeremiah, you don't know what the enemy is Babylon. But we also know that the enemy is God because they sinned against God. And God just called an army, called the Chaldeans. For the daughter of Zion, all her beauty. And she was in beauty. A golden temple. Everything was pure gold. The Bible describes that the choir that David and Solomon set up, there was no room for error. There was a gate called the Dung Gate. And what they would do is they would, and they still probably do it today, I heard, they washed the streets. Especially when it came to the Sabbath, especially when it came to feast day, they would wash the streets. And be clean. Her princes are become like hearts or deers that find no pasture. Weak, ill, unnourished. They are gone without strength before the fruit first her. So they ain't going to get very far if they ain't got no strength and they haven't been eaten. 
Jerusalem remembered in the days of her affliction and her misery and all her pleasant things, all that she did have, everything she had that was good, she had in the days of old. And Jerusalem has a vast good history. But man, she's got a terrible history too. Jeremiah would tell us in his book that as many as the streets of Jerusalem, there were gods. In every corner, there was an altar to the fallen gods. When her people fell into the hand of the enemy. See, this is all past tense of Jeremiah. None did help her. Where were all her friends, all her lovers? As a matter of fact, there were Jews that, that fled. And when they came into the Edomites, Esau, and we'll read, I forget which book it is. They, the Esau Edomites would grab the Jews and bring them to Babylon. Or the Babylonian army. Hey, look who I found. And when the city was destroyed and burned, the Bible says that the Esau, the Edomites, raise it, raise it. It means destroy it. They saw her and they did mock, mock at her Sabbath. Where, where's the Jew celebration the seventh day? There's the Sabbath. Look at the city burning. But be careful. God said, I'll curse them that curse you. That includes the city. Jerusalem has grievously sinned. Well, not the city. But in the aspects of the scriptures of the Bible, when there's been bloodshed, that bloodshed, especially when there's been no death of the murderer, that blood is imputed to the land, America. And God told the Jews, when you go into that land, you wipe them out. Don't take part of their sins. Or as, I, as their sins driven them out of the land, I will drive you out of the land. And he did. Therefore, she is removed. The sins is what drove her out. All the, You'll find Daniel, Daniel repenting of the iniquities and sins. Jesus will tell those who never got saved, depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. All that honor her or despise her. Well, that's a switch. It wasn't really honor then. Because they have seen her nakedness. Yea, she saw it. And turned it backwards. Her filthiness. You want to picture Jerusalem, Lamentations 1 9, in filthiness. Look at the filthiness of American cities. Look what goes on. And that's the greatest illustration in any city throughout the world. Look at what goes on behind closed doors and in the darkness, and that's the filthiness. She remembers not her last end. How could she? Everybody was gone. Therefore she came down wonderfully. That wonderfully isn't, oh, how great, how wonderful. That was like, whoa, wow. That's like we, the Bible says the great and terrible God. That don't mean God's bad. It means... Wow, it inspires terror, O oh Lord. Behold my affliction. For the enemy has magnified himself. Well, look at us, look how great we are. We conquered the city. The adversary has spread out his hands upon all her pleasant things. They spoiled the city. It's no more the Hebrews, it's the Babylonians. Everything that was in that temple is in Babylon because Belshazzar had a party the last night. 
For she has seen that the heathen, Babylonians, enter into her sanctuary in the most holy. How do you think he got the candlesticks and the tables we read in the last chapter? How did they get the brazen altar and everything? How did they get that the, the labor that they broke pieces of the brass? They went into the temple. Who now did command that they should not enter into the congregation. Gentile, that only the, the sons of Aaron were to go in that holy place. There was a king that went in there and burned incense. And he got leprosy. God allowed the Babylonian army to enter. And he didn't kill him. He didn't strike him for, talk, for touching his stuff. As he did for us. And the people who looked into the ark. All her people sighed. A lot of sighing going on. They seek bread. There was no bread in the city at the time of Jeremiah's in prison. There was no bread when the, when the Babylonians broke up the city. Ain't no bread now. They have given their pleasant things for meat to relieve the soul. They are pawning their goods that they do have to get some bread and meat. And the only one they would have to pawn themselves their lives to would be the Babylonians. Or maybe someone who's got food that they hid, O oh Lord, and consider. For I am become vile. You've been vile in the eyes of God. Is it nothing for you, all ye that pass by, everybody that travels through? Behold and see if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow. Okay, now, here comes the city speaking. There's no one that suffers as I've suffered. What is done unto me? That's Jerusalem speaking. That's a paragraph now. Wherefore the Lord has afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger. A judgment, an attitude of God's anger brings affliction, brings judgment. These hurricanes, these fires, these flooding, these famines, the COVID, the Delta, the Mu, whatever they call this new one. It's God's anger he's afflicting you. He wants you to repent. From above has he set fire unto my bones. And if city bones would be the avenues, the roads, the, the, the walls. And it prevails against them. He has spread a net for my feet. I'm trapped. I'm, I'm in a snare. I'm in a trap. And all I do is struggle. That's what a fish does in a net. He has turned me back. Going the wrong way. He has made me desolate. And faint. All the day. No strength. The yoke. Remember Jeremiah, Jeremiah wrote a, wore a yoke. That's hard to say. He wore a yoke. It was wood and then it became iron. But the yoke of my transgressions, when you sin against God, those sins become a yoke and you serve those sins. And only God through Jesus Christ can break that yoke. But still those yokes will bring you to death. The wages of sin is death. Is bound by his hand, God's hand. And they're still there because they did not repent. They are wreathed. You know what a wreath is? It's a, a, a thing that's been, been weaven together. 
It has been intertwined. It's made as one unit. It's like the thorns that were put on Jesus' head. They were wreathed together. They were shaped together. They come upon my neck. That's where yoke goes. He made my strength to fall. The Lord has delivered me to the hands, into their hands, for whom I am not able to rise up. You're not going to survive. You're not going to win with unconfessed sin, saved or lost. The Lord has trodden underfoot all the mighty men in the midst of me, the army. He has called an assembly against to crush my young men. The Lord has trodden the virgin, the daughter of Judah, as in a wine press. Look at the second advent. That second advent turns not, not the people to Jews, which happens now. But at the second advent will be the enemies of the heathen, the nations of God that are against God. The nations of God that are against God. For, the, for these things I weep, the city. My eye, my eye runneth down with water. The oh, city don't have eyes. Because the comforter that should relieve my soul is far from me. That comforter... <laughs> Jesus says it's the Holy Spirit. God is their comfort. But they're sinned against God. America, you know, we're a Christian nation. God should protect us. Not in your sin. My children are desolate. That's another frequent word. Because the enemy prevailed. Zion, this Jerusalem, spread forth her hands. And there is none to comfort. And speak of, I mean, look at a child. His reaction, he puts his hands out to be picked up in love. And there's, he's avoided. The Lord has commanded concerning Jacob that his adversary should be round about him. And Jerusalem is as a menstruous woman among them, unclean. A woman who, who is in her time of the month in the Bible is unclean. The Bible says, yeah, I mean, you can't touch her bed. You can't touch her set, the saddle she rides upon. You can't touch any unless you wash and clean and you be unclean until even. A husband could not even sleep with his wife in the same bed. Unclean. That's the law. The Lord is right. In all, in all, the Lord is righteous. People will go to hell. The Lord is righteous. Well, how can God do that? He sends people out there to tell them, don't go to hell. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They reject. The Lord is righteous. For I have rebelled against his commandment. It's not God. The problem ain't with God. It's with the sinner. Here, I pray you, all people, Jews and Gentiles. Behold my sorrow, my virgins and my young men are gone into captivity. Read Jeremiah, read Lamentations, nations of the world, and see what happens to someone who has sinned against the mighty God, churches. And see what happens when you sin against God and you don't repent. It don't work for the good. That Americans want it to. I call for my lovers. There's those lovers. They're not your lovers. But they deceive me. Is that a lover? I remember when my wife Lisa died. And people say, you know, she loved you. And we know for a fact that you loved her. But I know of relationships and usually they end in divorce. 
You deceived. You said at that marriage altar and to death do his part and you are divorced and neither of you are dead. You lied. You lied. You deceived. You can't point fingers. One of you were not a really a lover. My priest. Now that's the priests that were at the temple. Those were the proper priests. And also the improper priests. The priests of Baal. And my elders gave up the ghost in its death. Death, that's what gave up the ghost means. While they sought their meat to relieve their... They are starving to death. And in their starving to death, remember Jeremiah, he said, give them the, give them the bread until it's gone. In that time that Jeremiah is locked up in jail, there are people dying in the street, not by the Babylon. They are dying of hunger. They are dying of starvation. This is God's people. And America thinks she's going to get all the blessings of God. God bless America because we're American. A cock a poo poo on you. Because then God would have to apologize to the men of Judah. Behold the Lord, O oh Lord, I am in distress. My bowels are in trouble in my insides. Oh, my, I'm upset. I don't feel well. I'm nervous. I've got medical problems. I'm just uneasy. Troubles. My heart is turned within me. For I have grievously rebelled against God. You're not going to get the best of help when you rebel against God. You say, oh, you know, look at that wicked sinner. He lived his whole entire life and then he died. And he's in hell in torment and he can't even get a drop of water. It did not turn out in the end very good for him. Abroad the sword breatheth. The sword of the enemy, the sword of the Lord, it, it, it's causing sadness, it's causing, sor it's causing sorrow, it's causing death. The sword of the Lord today, COVID-19, you know how many funerals there have been with COVID-19. And we are such in the day and age, and listen, for, if this has happened to you, I, I apologize, I'm not mocking, but there have been, and I, I know in my own church, there has been a family member who has died, and they can't go to the funeral because they have COVID. There are people who are in the hospital today, and the family can't, nobody can visit them because they got COVID. COVID is a bereavement today. A spouse, a, a, a pastor, or, or any religious authority of yours, a spouse or ch child near kinship can't even come see you in the hospital. And if you, if you don't get well, the only next time they're going to be able to see you is when you're dead. And if you are of the Catholic religion and your faith believe upon you need the last rites, you're not going to get the last rites of COVID. By your beliefs in the Catholic Church, you're going to die, go straight to hell because you didn't get the last rites. Now I guarantee they'll probably have some kind of, you know, you can do it on TV or computer or something. You know, the Catholic Church will change its tradition. At home there is a death there they yeah. at home there is as a death. We got today in the, in the broad, we got the house the hospitals, and we got at home people are dying of COVID.
They have heard that I sigh. A lot of sighing. Can you imagine? I was listening to a woman today. We were at the laundromat. Her, her, whatever has possibly COVID. And they can't tell anybody because he worked for a restaurant. And if they do, they feel the whole restaurant's going to have to close. But can you imagine? This, hi, um, uncle is not feeling well. What's wrong? Uh, they think it's COVID. Oh, I'm sorry. Mom is going into the hospital. What's wrong? It's COVID. Oh, man. I know uh, our pastor can't be in church and won't be able to do any meds. Why? He's got COVID. Oh. Well, where's our boss today? Where, where is he? You didn't hear? No, he died this weekend of COVID. Oh, even as much as I hate him, he's my boy. That's 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 terrible. There is none to comfort me. And I'm telling you, when it comes, I've, I've been a widower twice. And people say the stupidest things. People will come up to you who's never had a spouse die, and they will give you godly advice. <laughs> and those who are smart enough and wisdom enough to say, I, I didn't go through that. I, I don't know how you feel. I'm sorry. That's no comfort. <laughs> And there's no comfort for the one that doesn't know what to say, and doesn't know how to say, and opens up their mouth. You go up to your pastor, your church, say, Pastor, you know, my wife is dead. Uh, I don't know how you feel. That's why you don't get a pastor who's a greenhouse plant from, from college that's never had a life and never even been married. Because he hasn't gone through troubles and problems. Imagine an unmarried pastor trying to tell you and your wife how to live. He doesn't know. All my enemies have heard of my trust. Oh, the news spreads around. I guarantee. What's the saying? Bad news will travel around quicker than good news is it's putting their pants on, something like that. <clears throat> People you don't even know will hear about your bad news. And if that's not the case, people will make up bad news. You know how many times I've had in a public ministry, people come up to me, oh, I heard you were dead. <laughs> well, no. We did. At the farmer's market, it was one time, <clears throat> they came, oh, you haven't been here for a while. I know. You know, they hoped that you dropped dead. Well, you know, we went back to Connecticut. My wife wanted to go to Connecticut. I died? Yeah, I did good. I did die. I went to Connecticut. That's the, that's the, that's the worst thing next to... I went to Connecticut, and people like, he died. And it was bad enough. One time I was gone from... I was gone for a month in the hospital, and, and I went back there, and the caretaker, the whole thing. Because, you know, well, you were good last week. Yeah, because I wasn't here. You weren't? The only good that they would think of me is not being there. That's good. They are glad that thou has done it. Done? What's that? We're happy and praise to the Babylonians. You deserve what you got, Israel. That will bring the day that thou has called. Jeremiah and Isaiah and Ezekiel have been preaching that day all along. And they have preached about that time. And the prophets have preached about a time. Paul's preached about a time. Jesus preached about a time. Peter preaches about a time. I preach about a time. Pastors are supposed to preach about a time. Street preachers preach about a time. There's a time coming of the rapture. There's a time coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
It will come. And the day that it happens, see, I told you. I hope the day the rapture happens and I'm alive, I hope I'm preaching at the, at the farmer's market. I hope I would get the last words to say, I told you it was going to happen. Bye. Or the day at the, at the great white throne judgment, when, when the people at the farmer's market I preach to, and I have to stand judgment against it, I told you, I warned you, we have, you know you, every single week you heard me. I told you, I told you, did I not preach the truth? I told you, the day that I told you about, here it is. That's what's going to happen the Great White Throne Judgment. When Mama's looking at her boy and saying, I told you, I warned you, I prayed for you. Here we are. And you're going to declare that Jesus Christ is the Lord, as I told you. And you're going to go in the lake of fire. I told you. Because God says what he says, he will do it. They shall be like unto me. Everything that's happened to Jerusalem will happen to all the nations. If God did it to his people, you better believe he's going to do it to the unrighteous nations. Judgment begins at the house of God and it goes out. It moves out. Listen, if God's going to judge me for unconfessed sin, and all of my other sin that's under the blood. But if he's going to judge me for unconfessed sin and things that I've done of myself and not for Jesus, what do you think he's going to do for the unsaved man? That's why the great white throne judgment is on the side of eternity. There is no time. You imagine how much time it would be to judge all the lost people all the way back to Cain. That'd be an awful long time. Thank God there's not a thousand years. As amazing grace, 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 amazing grace falsely says. We've been there for 10,000. There is no 10,000 years. Let all their wickedness come before thee. That's the nation. It will happen. When we're finished at the judgment seat of Christ, all right, Lord, when's it going to be ready to get those who haven't believed you? Just hold on, wait. Oh, we, we wouldn't be saying that. Did not the souls that were beheaded for the word of God at under the throne of, of God, did they, Lord, when are you going to avenge us? Just wait. Just hold on. There'll be more that are going to die. And God says to them, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. Why would that be said if there's not people who are seeking revenge? Because you're not going to get that justice revenge on this earth. As thou hast done unto me. You see the golden rule? As thou hast done unto me, thou shalt do unto me. There it is. Lamentations 122. And the golden rule is, Lord, you judge me. You judge them. Catholics got it wrong. But then again, the Catholics have judged nations and taken their blood. For all my transgression. Now the Jew has perfect right to say that. Everything that they've done to me, everything Adolf Hitler's done to us, Lord, Father. And if God, he's not going to, but God would say, what makes you say that? You say, cursed be anybody that curses us. The Pharaoh, the Pharaoh of Egypt, Lord, get him. He cursed us. Haman, get him, Lord, he cursed us. You know the greatest Jew? 
of all the Jews? I mean, the Bible says, curse them that curse you. Think about all the people that cursed Jesus Christ, the greatest Jew of all the Jews. All those that cursed Jesus Christ, wait till the day you get your curse. Beginning with the ones that put him on the cross. And didn't believe in the cross. For my sighs again are many. And my heart is faint. And I guarantee there's very many today heart ailments of all the misery going around. 